What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and today I'm going to be showing you what I believe to be is the best build currently in Grounded 1.2.5. Obviously, there's not going to be another update for a while, so I thought, why not show you what I think is currently the best build. Now, this is for going around the backyard, exploring. It isn't in for any particular boss or any particular situation. It's kind of just if you're running around, you want to kill stuff quickly, and this is going to be the build you're going to want to use. I'm going to walk you through the armor, the weapons, the mutations, everything you're going to need, and then I'll show you me massacring everything in the backyard using it. So, first of all, the weapon of choice is going to be the Widow Dagger. Uh, ideally, you have one of these level 9 in every single variation. Uh, I recommend you get the Widow Dagger to level 5, then use the Super Duper to dupe it four times and make all of these different variations. Of course, you're going to want a hammer and an axe in order to harvest any resources you find coming across the yard. I've just gone with these level 9 mighty because the most damage means it'll take the least hits to break stuff when I'm farming it. We've gone with the Black Ox crossbow here. Now, I'm not really much of a crossbow user, but there are some enemies where you'll want a ranged weapon. Say there's a wasp, you'll want to first inflict it with bleed using the feather arrows, which is why we've chosen those. And you're going to just use your crossbow so that you can get an attack off to draw the wasp in so that you can put the damage in on it. Very, very important that you have this um, just for a few enemies in the yard that can be a bit of a pain to fight. Then we have the Fire Ant Shield. Now, obviously, this makes it so when you parry, it reduces enemy defense. You're really, really, really going to want this. It's really useful to have. In terms of healing, you're going to want smoothies and bandages. I recommend Beefy Slop, but I'm in a custom world, so I can't craft Slop. So I've gone with just Beefy Hedgelord, something that doesn't give any good effects. I wouldn't recommend you craft Hedgelord. Just make Slop. It's very, very cheap. And then also bandages, obviously, for that passive regen effect. You can use any meals you want. I recommend using your spicy weapon to kill things as you're running around and eating, like, cooked aphid and cooked weevil meat for extra buffs, of course. We've gone with Thor's Pendant as the trinket. It is simply the best trinket in the game. Um, in terms of just overall running around the yard, it's just going to be the one you want to use, to be completely honest with you. In terms of armor, we've gone with the Widow Leggings. Now, you could use the Widow Chestplate instead and interchange it and use Assassin Leggings, so swapping these two around. It is very important, though, you use the Mask of the Mother Demon. Now, I'm going to show you why here. You can see there is a full set of Mother Demon armor here. As you can see, the number in the middle of the screen, the Mask gives 7.5% resistance even though it is a medium armor. The chest plate and the leggings give 5% and 2.5%. Now, 2.5% is the equivalent of a light piece of armor. 5% is also the equivalent of a light chest plate. So you'll see here, 2.5% resistance, 5% resistance. And these are 2.5% resistance and 5% resistance. And they have the same defense as well. So these are the equivalent of light pieces of armor, even though they're given as medium underneath in the description, which means they're using more stamina and giving you less protection. The helmet, on the other hand, is 7.5% resistance, which is the equivalent of a heavy piece of armor, despite it being a listed as a medium armor, which means it's actually giving you more resistance. So you want to use the helmet. I know there's a lot of guides out there where people have used the chest plate and the leggings. This is completely wrong. You absolutely should not listen to these people. It is simply the wrong answer. The helmet is the best piece of the three, as it gives you the most resistance out of the three. Uh, and you just have to be using this. Do not use the chest plate or the leggings. Um, you want the helmet to be sleek. Chest plate, you can use sleek or bulky because the sleek effect is just crit stun. It's not actually that useful. Personally, I'm going to go with the bulky version as this is going to give you more defense. And this armor is a little bit light on defense. Sleek helmet, the sleek leggings for that parry poison when you're parrying an enemy's attacks. This is how I like to lay out my hotbar here. Uh, you could do it slightly differently if you want to. It is completely up to you. In terms of mutations, Assassin is a must-have. Get that extra bleed damage when you're attacking enemies. Natural Explorer for running around the yard. I put this on because this is a build for exploring the yard. If you're not using Natural Explorer, you're doing it wrong. Coupe de Gras. 5% crit chance using a fast swinging weapon is just one to go for. Mom genes also very good, increasing that poison damage that you're doing. If you're fighting certain enemies that are resistant or immune to poison, you could switch this out. And Cardio Fan, again, a very, very strong mutation. Just recover that stamina as fast as possible. A few other mutations you could use are Spicy Safety, very, very good mutation if you are fighting things that are doing smashing or stabbing damage. Mithridatism, if you're fighting enemies that have a uh, that deal poison damage. 
Trapper Peeper, of course. If you're fighting enemies that may be resistant to poison, you don't want to use Mom Jeans, then chuck on Trapper Peeper for that extra damage if you have it stage 3. Very hard to get, though. Shocking Dismissal is another amazing mutation to use. I would highly recommend it. Uh, Guard Dog and Ant Annihilator are also very, very good for specific situations. Those are all the mutations. That is the build. And now I'm going to show you some uh, clips of me destroying enemies using it. Right, let's start off at the Red Ant Hill. Let me quickly change my settings here. Uh, that should be good. And let's just show how good this build is. You know, we'll start off easy and we'll work our way up. The Red Ant Hill, a very basic place to start off. Look at the enemy. I will explain how this build works. So essentially, you have Venom and Poison Coating on the helmet that you are using. So that inflicts one stack of Venom and Poison. I'm not even using Ant Annihilator, by the way. You have um, Bleed from the Dagger. Every time you hit a crit, because you have Coupe de Gras, you will also inflict a second stack of Bleed. And then you are also, the Dagger itself inflicts a base Poison effect. You're doing two stacks of poison. You're doing two stacks of bleed. You can actually get a third stack of poison with parry poison from the Widow armor. Just like that. Um, and then you can get a venom stack. We're using the venom coating from your helmet. If you parry using the fire and shield, it will lower enemy defense as well. So you have one stack of corrosion, which lowers enemy defense. You have three stacks of poison, two stacks of bleed, and a stack of venom. So the most most of the damage in this build is coming from just stacking effects on enemies. You'll see, I'm not even bothering to heal or anything. I'm just slashing non-stop. The mom genes increases your poison damage and also spawns in more spiders, which are going to do even more damage. The assassin effect increases your damage. The coupe de gras effect is getting that bleed to proc from your assassin armor because the assassin armor's special effect is when you hit a crit, it'll create an extra bleed effect. So the ant hill just got wiped out instantly. But the ant hill's easy. Let's go somewhere where there's more difficult enemies to take on. Okay, up next we have a Black Ops Beetle, as you can see, still on a medium difficulty here. I'm going to pop a bandage, and we're just going to go in for a fight with the guy. Make sure we pull out the right weapon here. This guy's resistant to slashing, remember. So if anything, this weapon shouldn't be great against him, really. Look at the stacks of effects. This guy has poison, he has venom, he has bleed times two, he has corrosion, and it's not even the dagger doing the damage, it's the effects. That fight was 30 seconds for a Black Ox Beetle that is resistant to slashing damage, which is the damage type that the daggers do. He's resistant to it, and I still smoked him. And one of the best parts about this build is when you're fighting things like Fire Ants, even if they get low on health and try to run away, they're just going to get smoked because the effects are all just going to tear them apart instantly. But of course, it wouldn't be a video if I didn't take on one of the hardest enemies to fight in the game um, to prove that this build is good. Now, obviously, you want to, uh, to avoid getting hit by the Widowlings, but I don't really care. The Widow itself is what we are interested in. So let's go in for the fight. Obviously, you'd want a Mighty Dagger here, as the Widow is resistant to every single thing in the game. Um, very important you try to parry as much as you can here. Now, it is important to note that the Widow doesn't take poison damage. It's immune. So the only effects that are going to help here are the Venom and the two bleed effects, which does render this build slightly less powerful against enemies that are resistant to poison or enemies that are immune to poison or Venom, kind of like the infected Broodmother. It's not going to be as good against her. But you'll see, even though this uh, enemy is still resistant to most of the effects we output, I still absolutely tear through it. Here we go. Now the wasps want to fight. Now, I'm going to take out the ants first. This is like one of the most dangerous areas in the game right now, by the way. This sort of like... This just part of the map. It just has ladybirds, fire ants, ladybird lava, wasps. There's everything here. I think there's another ant after me right now, actually. But you'll see here the wasp is just stacking debuffs. And the best way to take out the wasps is just to put a million debuffs on them. Uh, what is attacking me? It is a firework ant. Let's get rid of this guy. Look at that. Five effects instantly destroyed him. Oh, there's the ladybird larvas I was talking about. Oh, he's, he's... Oh, no, I killed my own spiderling. Whoopsie. But he didn't last long, did he? Okay, we do have a couple more wasps here. Let's see if they want to go. 
Right, there we go. Oh, look at that. He's got like six debuffs. The uh, feather arrows are being used, by the way, because obviously they, um, they inflict an extra stack of bleed. Uh, you can obviously get infinite feather arrows if you just use the Wasp Queen trinket because it uh, gives you arrow refund. But yeah, look at that. The Wasp absolutely obliterated. Um, let's use it against one of the hardest enemies in the game, which is the Wasp Drone. These guys are notoriously annoying to fight because they heal non-stop. They're one of the hardest enemies to kill in the game. And I'm going to give you a pro tip here. Don't parry their attacks. Only block them. The reason you want to not parry it is because if you parry it, it's going to go, uh, it's going to knock the enemy back. Whereas if you hold block, it's actually going to draw the wasp drone in closer. So that's what we're going to do. If you parry, it'll knock them back. But because we blocked, he's coming closer. Now I've inflicted three effects on him. You'll notice, look at his health, look at his health. Hold block here. And I don't even need to do anything here. He's just going to die from all the effects I've given him. Absolutely rolled. So yeah. That is, in my opinion, the best build in Grounded as of right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you go give the build a try yourself. Uh, obviously, you want to try it in a custom game before you try it in your own survival world. But I would definitely go for it. I think the Widow Dagger is one of the best weapons. You could also try it using the Toenail Scimitar, which is also really, really good. But let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you in the next Grounded video. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.